it's autumn in the United Kingdom and this is the season when I typically start getting phone calls about the autumn leaves and I, I get asked two questions very frequently. One is, are the autumn colours brighter this year than usual? And the second one is, is it caused by climate change? I'd like to clear up, this is 2012 and personally I'm not convinced we do have a spectacular autumn this year. What gives rise to really good autumn colours is if you have bright, clear, crisp, warm days and then cooler nights. And so you need quite a bit of sun coming in to generate sugars in the leaves. And then if you get a quick cold snap, you often get more spectacular colours. Whereas for the last month we've had, apart from today, which is lovely, mostly mild, grey, dreary conditions, which isn't perfect. Well, the truth about the autumn colours is that these colours have been there all year round. And the only reason we're seeing them now is because the chlorophyll, which is the green pigment in the leaves, is being withdrawn by the tree and it's breaking down. And it's revealing these other colours that lie underneath it, the reds and the yellows, which are generated by a group of chemicals called the carotenoids. In fact, if we look at this tree here, you can see on some of these leaves exactly what's happening. You can see the yellow tissue that's being revealed as the green chlorophyll is breaking down and usually it breaks down gradually moving back from the edge to the leaf towards the veins. So you sometimes see leaves with bright green veins but still yellow all around them. Why is the chlorophyll being taken away? It's not so much that it's been taken away, it's that it's not being restored and so the tree doesn't need it anymore. Trees in northern uh, climates lose their leaves in winter because otherwise they'd lose a huge amount of water through them during the wind and in the cold. And when the ground is frozen and they can't get water up through their roots, that's really quite a serious risk. Is it because they're constantly evaporating water from their leaves, they would literally dry out the whole tree. And so they shed their leaves because there's no advantage to having them. It's not really light enough for them to photosynthesize properly. And they would um, suffer as a consequence if they didn't. Other trees, for example, the yew here or the holly next to us, these don't lose their leaves in winter, but they pay a price as a consequence. They have much thicker, tougher leaves that lose less water. They have waxy coatings on them. And so they're geared towards being able to survive the winds and to not dehydrate. But that means they also grow more slowly. And so while deciduous trees can grow faster in the summer and take up more carbon, these trees will grow more slowly, but they're able to grow throughout the year and to keep their leaves for longer. In the northern United States, it's very common for people to go out at this time of year to witness the spectacular autumn colours in uh, Vermont and uh, Pennsylvania, and I've seen them myself. And it's certainly true that over there you get a much greater display of colour than you get in the United Kingdom and elsewhere in Europe. And there's a reason for that, and it's a simple chemical reason, which is that a higher proportion of the trees there contain a different family of chemicals called anthocyanins. This maple here, not 100% convinced it's an American maple, but I'll check that later. You can see it has a much darker purpley red colour to the leaves, which is generated by these anthocyanin chemicals that build up in the leaves right towards the end of the summer and into autumn. And things like the sugar maple that give you these blazes of reds across whole hillsides are due to these chemicals. The other factor that may be important in the American forests is that when you compare similar trees between Europe and America, they have bigger leaves. So it is fair to say that American trees are bigger and louder in their colour displays. People have asked me a number of times what effect climate change is likely to have on autumn colours, and the truth is we don't really know. Part of the reason for that is that although it may well get warmer um, throughout the world, the the equation for creating autumn colours isn't very exact and there's also interactions of rainfall and cloud cover and light levels and the timing of autumn is also likely to shift. It may be that autumn just occurs slightly later in the year so we might get exactly the same thing just delayed by a few days or a week. So for now we can't say what effect climate change is having or whether it will have any effect at all. It's been suggested by some people that the anthocyanins are toxic and the reason that maples and trees like this produce such large amounts of them is because when the leaves fall it poisons the soil effectively and so competitors growing around the tree get this input of toxic chemicals right at the end of the year that sets them back in the spring. But the truth is we don't really know.
What we have here is a sycamore tree that's illustrating the stages I was talking about earlier of the different development of colours through the leaf. And so what's happening on this leaf is you can see the receding green colour as the chlorophyll breaks down and moves back towards the stems and here the brighter red colours, this is mostly I think going to be um, an anthocyanin developed colour and over here you've got a mix of different colours so you have the the neutral type of yellow colours which are from the carotenoid chemicals, the deeper reds from the anthocyanins and still a bit of the greenish chlorophyll hanging on in some parts of the leaf behind.